Storygram Network. Hosting for this podcast is generously provided by Transistor at Transistor.fm. Hi, my name is Laura Lee, and this is It's Not About Food. So it's not about food, and it's not about weight. What is it about? Everything else. Because it's never ever about food. Or weight. Never ever. Not even. One time. Not ever. Ever ever. Hi, I'm Takeshi. I am the editor and producer of... It's not about food podcasts. Laura Lee is going to be out for the month, but what we wanted to do is we wanted to share the video series onto the podcast platforms, which is available exclusively on Patreon, except for this month. So for today's episode, Laura Lee is going to talk about fullness, which was the first episode of the video series. And I feel like a lot of people haven't been able to check that out because I think it's only on YouTube right now. And also, I wanted to share my favorite segments throughout the series. I'm just going to share one a week, and we'll see if you agree too. So first off, instantly... I thought of episode 56, the three-prong recovery with the peer educators. There is a really good segment with Brianna, which she's actually the first one in there. And she is describing intuitive eating. I'm only going to share about three or four minutes of it, but you should definitely check it out. And she is so honest about what intuitive eating is for her. And it's, sometimes it's hard to get that truth out of people. So enjoy. Brianna, hello. How are you doing today? Hello, I'm Brianna Thompson. I'm 16 years old and I go to San Rafael High School and I've been with Beyond Hunger for the past three years since I was a freshman. And um, I'm here to talk about intuitive eating today. So basically, intuitive eating is like you eat when you're hungry and then you stop eating when you're full. It's a simple idea, but it also can be very challenging for many people. But I like to think of it like eating like you're a baby. You cry when you're hungry and you stop eating when you're full. To elaborate on that, in my personal experience with it, I believe that I'm a very intuitive eater because I get very hangry when I don't have <laughs> enough food in my stomach. And it's, I get very hangry and all my friends recognize it and then we go and get food. And then immediately after, I feel like so much better. The impact that food makes on my personality is insane. and so. I believe that intuitive eating is, makes such a big difference in your lifestyle and everything. And explain hangry to people who might not know what that is. Oh, hangry. <laughs> okay. So when my stomach begins to grumble, I just start imagining food. And then if, it's, if I can't get to it at a certain time, I just get super angry. And like, I don't get mad at people. I'm just like snappy. I'm like, I need food. But I don't want to say it either because I don't know. So you probably your blood sugar drops and yeah. you're not, you're just no, not that you, thinking straight. Yeah. Yeah. And so maybe you're snappy at people, but really it's just that you're really, really hungry. And this is the emotion that's coming up that goes with that, especially if you don't think that you can get your hands on something that you like right now. So the third part of that is knowing what your body wants. So there's knowing when you're hungry, knowing what your body wants, and then knowing when you're full, and then sort of just trusting the wisdom of your body about those three things and sort of obeying, you know, obeying the body that wants to have these things so that it can run in an optimal way. So you know that you're hungry by you start to feel kind of snappy and upset, angry. For me, I know that I'm hungry because I start to not feel very good. I start to just not, I sort of run out of gas, if you will. But how do you know, or how do you tell people 
how they would know what their bodies want? Well, honestly, right now I'm a little bit hungry. And what I could say I feel right now is I kind of just want a snack right now. And I wouldn't say I'm very angry or anything, but I have like a barrier over my mind. Like I don't really feel like myself completely. And so I kind of lose touch with like how I process things and everything because my brain is just, it's constantly thinking about food or like when's the next time I'm going to eat. Mm-hmm. And so I, that's why I really focus on intuitively eating because I completely like just space out if I don't have enough food in my system. And so food just makes me really happy. And if I don't have it, it makes me really angry. So that is perfect. So how do you know out of all the food in the whole wide world, which is the one that's going to feed or satisfy this hunger? Now, we can't always get all the food in the whole wide world, but how do you know, okay, this is a protein hunger, this is a fruit hunger, this is a drink of water hunger, you know, whatever. How do you know? Sometimes I don't really know and I'll go and I'll, I'll start with a healthy snack. Maybe I'll eat like a peach or an apple and then I'll maybe be hungry again. And so then I'll start making myself like a, a little meal or something like that. But usually I start off with a snack and some water just to make sure that it's like, I don't know, just maybe I'm a little bit hungry. I have to say when you showed such a beautiful experience of exactly that when we all went out to lunch and when we were standing there ordering you said I am really not hungry at all I'm just gonna sit with you guys and hang out because I just am full I don't I'm not hungry I just don't none of this even looks good to me right now it's like okay you know nobody pressured you or anything so we went out we sat down and maybe in, I don't know, half hour, maybe less, you said, okay, I'm hungry now. I'm going to go get this. (laughs) I know. It just clicked. I was like, I'm hungry now. I need food. It was so perfect. And I feel like that's the best intuitive eating that I know of is that we're not hungry, not hungry, not hungry. Oh, all of a sudden, hungry. It's sort of like tired, not tired, not tired. All of a sudden, so tired, you can't even believe you're, you're not in bed already. Right after everyone finished their meals, too, I was like, okay, now it's time for me to eat. Yeah, but it was so perfect for what we're working with. And I think the other part of this, because a lot of times we're pressured into eating when we're not hungry, especially when we're young. It's sort of like, well, we're all eating, so you need to eat because I'm not going to be having a kitchen wide open all the time. And the same way with what it is that you want to eat, your parent or your significant other says, well, I made this, I want you to eat this. And you're like, I love that, but right now I'm not hungry for that. And so, you know, navigating that sort of chart of our own self is such a good lesson. And when we're little, we get away with it because we're little and they want to give us what we want. But when we get older, it's sort of like you're being a pain in the ass. Storygram Network. Welcome to One Media, One Media. I'm... When you're whining with nurses. It's a place I like to call The Bleed. My name is Laura Lee. And this is It's Not About Food. The art of being yay isn't just something he developed. Storygram Network. Hi, my name is Laura Lee Rourke. I am one of the founders of Beyond Hunger and also one of the co-authors of two books with Carol Normandy, which are It's not about food and over it. I'm talking today about the idea that complete recovery from an eating disorder is doable. Not only doable, but completely possible. There is a cure. You do not have to struggle with this the rest of your life. You don't have to be afraid of food. You don't have to hate your body. You can actually love food, love your body, feel your feelings, and take care of yourself no matter what. And we'll go through the 10 principles of recovery that helped us in our own recovery, and then it has helped us help others with their own recovery. 
So what we're going to do is talk about today, we're going to talk about the, actually the 10th principle, which is complete recovery is possible. And I say that because I've seen it over and over and over again, and I've seen it in my own life. And Carol, even though she's not here right this minute, but she will be on the podcast, it happened with her as well. So um, I thought when I was struggling with eating disorders that I would never recover, that I would never trust myself with food. I would never like my body. I would never be able to not diet. I would never be able to eat anything I wanted. I always would have to be on a very strict diet or a very, very um, deprivation sort of food plan. Or I would just be binging all the time. So I would swing from one to another, one to another. But what I learned in my own recovery and with the people coming after me that I've helped recover is that one of the important things is to sort of think about what it would be for you to recover. What would that look like? Would it be that you could eat intuitively, which is one of the principles? Would it be that you can love and accept and take care of the body that you have, which is another principle? Would it be that you can feel your feelings and know your feelings and be okay with your feelings no matter what they are? Would it be that you find the work that you want to do and the life you want to have and live it to fully and uh, fabulously? Would it be that? Would it be finding others on the path with you and having a whole new community of people who also believe that you can recover from an eating disorder. So one of the things that I think is very important is to get clear what would recovery look like to you. So you would know it when you had it. And another thing to remember is that you have a very good reason for your eating disorder. And that is a very important part of recovery. What are you doing? What are you doing with food? What are you doing with weight? So the name of our book is It's Not About Food, and that'll be the name of the podcast as well. But it's never about food. It's never about your weight, and it is never about what you think it is about. It is about all the other stuff underneath the eating disorder that drives you. So going with the last principle, which is it's completely possible to recover from an eating disorder. Coming from that place, we're gonna start this podcast with the hope that you will know in your heart of hearts that you will get through this and there is help available. There are many people out here. They're not, you may not always see them with the culture that we live in right now, but there are many people who believe that we can recover and we do recover. So thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. You can find me on all the social medias at It's Not About Food. And if you would like to get the show a week early and ad free, you can become a member at Patreon. Search It's Not About Food podcast. Thanks so much.